You're listening to the Tumbling Saber Podcast, a member of the Star Wars Commonwealth Podcast Network. Check us out on the web at StarWarsCommonwealth.com, on iTunes, Facebook, and Twitter, and take your first step into a larger world. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 62 of the Tumbling Saber Podcast. I'm Kyle. I'm Corey. And there's no James this week. James is having some technical issues. We are in the midst of a big snowstorm, snowpocalypse if you will. Um, so it's going to be uh, Corey and I this week. And uh, it's been a while since I've spoken to Corey. So uh, what's going on, man? How's your weekend been? Well, it really hasn't been that bad, uh, that long to be honest. I mean, we've been discussing... Uh a certain poll a lot recently, which I think uh, I, I, I might got, I might have got a little too sithy for my own good. I think we'll I think we'll, uh, we'll discuss that tomorrow. I meant I meant speaking as in not not via text or Twitter or Facebook. No, true, actual true. voice. That's what yeah. I was talking about. Is so everything good? Uh, so so, not too bad. It was, it was a decent weekend, relaxing, like you said. Lots and lots of snow out here. Like I, I literally, I'll drink to that because. I literally just dug my car out for over 25 minutes in my own driveway because I was stupid enough to say, yeah, I can make it. I can make it. And I decided to gun it out and boom, just stuck. Dug and dug and dug around underneath every tire. Still couldn't get traction. Finally got the old uh, car mats out, shoved them under the tires and luckily that did the trick because I was, I was starting to get quite uh, quite wet, frustrated and... Uh, yeah, losing my patience. But yeah, other than that, I, I watched a lot of Clone Wars and I finally got a chance to rewatch the Mortis trilogy, which was like, oh God, just so good. Like it's been years since I'd seen it. And now looking back, I don't even know if I'd ever seen all three episodes. So wow, just It's amazing. a mind bender. It's an yeah. absolute mind bender. So good. So good. I, I, you know, one of the things coming out of that whole arc is... Did like did that actually happen? I think so. I mean, everything about that episode rang true. Um, Anakin being the chosen one. Like, granted, okay, yeah. Like, where did it happen? Uh, no time had passed and whatnot, but it was just a thing of beauty. Like, well, it's, it's those... like when you have a dream, right? Like when you have a dream that feels like it goes on for half an hour. In reality, a dream lasts only a few seconds. Yeah, it's interesting. Or like that movie Contact where Jodie Foster, they use the technology, the alien technology, and she goes through this wormhole and she's gone for like 30 or 40 hours or 20 hours or something. That's what her camera records. But in live time, it just looks like she just drops right through the thing in like two seconds, right? Yeah. Well, I don't remember that movie, but I'll take your word for it. Yeah, Carl Sagan wrote that. It's so good. I, I do remember enjoying that movie, but to be honest with you, that was what, 1994? Five, ninety three. Yeah. That was a while ago. That's old, man. That's <laughs> that's an old movie. Hey, I want to ask you. Um, well, actually, I want to ask everybody out there uh, if they haven't been to Star Wars Podcast Awards dot com yet to to head over there. And uh, if you have voted for us, we thank you. We hope that uh, you did you did well by the Star Wars Commonwealth. And and if you did, you can you know you you can clear the cookies in your browser and and, and do it again. <laughs> Go stuff that ballot box for the Star Wars Commonwealth. Uh, that would be amazing. Uh, I also want to give a quick shout out, a hi to at Old Sci Fi Geek on Twitter. It's, he's been a listener for a while, and uh, I just heard from him this weekend. So a hearty hello to you, sir, and uh, glad to make your acquaintance. And uh, don't be a stranger. Keep in touch with us. We we this is why we do this. this is, it was all about connecting with Star Wars fans. And uh, this may shock you, but uh, Corey. Old Sci-Fi Geek is from UK, where where the vast majority of our great fans come from. No, uh, we we follow each other as well. We uh, it happened a few weeks ago. I think we had spoken as well. And yeah, welcome aboard, man. Hopefully, we hear from you soon. Absolutely, we love hearing from Star Wars fans, uh, and especially Star Wars fans who listen to our show and any of the Commonwealth shows. Um, 
I, I, just, I just look at my show notes here and I start laughing. Have you been looking at the Josh Gad versus Daisy Ridley thing? I'd seen one prior to this evening. And then it's basically when I was looking at the, the show notes, I said, okay, well, they're in here. I, I might as well have a look at all of them. And yeah, they were great, man. They were pretty funny. Especially the one with the Dame Judy Dench. <laughs> I love it. You know, when I saw the first one, I wasn't sure if it was a put on, if if they were both in on it, or if Josh Gad had actually uh, caught Daisy Ridley in a bad moment. You know, she's there in her in her robe, and she's got her she's got her hairnet on to pr- protect her her hairdo for for the shooting, and you know, I I thought he just caught her. Uh, but, but you, you know, I think from his perspective too, that's great PR for him. You know. How is that great PR for him? I don't know. Like, he knows it's going to get so many hits, most likely, whenever he posts it on whatever media he did. Well, sure. Yeah, I mean, he, he knew that was going to get viral in it, and sure enough, it did. But it, it was so funny, because if if they were in on it together, and I'm sure at this point they, they have been in on it, um, Daisy was perfect. She looked frustrated. She looked annoyed. She sounded frustrated and annoyed. Yeah, and uh, she she sold it for me, and that that was that was the whole attraction. The, the the questions he was asking, the look of annoyance on her face, I loved it. And then part two was more of the same, and then of course, bringing bringing in Dame Judy Dench to essentially ask the same questions again from a very unexpected source. Yeah, I, I love her face too. And of course, the the video strategically cuts when Daisy Ridley says, "Okay," and she's gonna apparently reveal all. But very funny. I, I wonder if this little saga is going to continue while they continue to work together. Uh, I hope I only I can only hope so, but um, I hope it doesn't tread to too much of a of a good thing. That's true. You gotta you gotta stop while you're ahead. But I'm on the same page as you. Like I didn't. Well, you kind of seem to think they're on the same page, but I still can't really tell. Like maybe she she, she sold it very well that both of us neither can tell all that well. So. I I don't know. Like I think he kind of is just busting chops in a way. Like, hey uh, Daisy, you know, like aren't you you're part of this uh, this big film? Blah blah blah. You know, and she's just like, uh huh. Like, well, uh, I think maybe the first one could have been him catching her off guard, and then it was like, okay, let's let's just let's just have some fun with this, all right? And then she decided, oh, okay, fine, but really, I'm not telling you anything, which of course she's not going to do. Well, I'm sure that's that's more likely the case as well like seeing as how it did so like you said went so viral the first time around that you know the second time around she was probably just like okay <laughs> yeah no, I'm, I'm glad she's she seems to be a really good sport so uh whether she's in on it or whether she's just <clears throat> being caught repeatedly in a compromising situation uh, i don't care because um it, it's making me laugh what, what's she filming i think it's the the orient express if i'm not mistaken Hell if I know. It sounds. I think you're right, though. I I think she's got that on on her docket as a project. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so, making Star Wars had this. Uh, they got it from Jedi Bibliotheque, which I think is a a, a German Star Wars uh, news site. Uh, but Force Friday, this coming year for the Last Jedi, is happening on September first. So that will be, will we be off that day? Will that be our Labor Day weekend or Labor Day Friday? I don't know. Let me skip ahead here. That will be our Labor Day weekend. So that, that'll be a long weekend for us. We could maybe uh, bundle that up to a four-day weekend and make it all about hunting down Star Wars stuff. Well, do you think it's actually going to happen out here this year? Like we, we had discussed this last year and, you know, the past a couple of years have been forced failures like all around, no? Oh, they'll they'll do it. They'll just not do it well. And there's going to be no midnight opening in Quebec. Neither, no, right? our, our silly labor laws uh, prevent midnight openings, so we will have to go the Friday morning. Um, yeah, no, I, you know what? You know what I've realized is, you know, I may be just a saga spender. That's what I'm, I'm going to term this. Uh, I didn't buy. I bought almost nothing from Rogue One. I, I think the only Rogue One figure I have is uh, the six-inch K2SO. I don't yeah. have anything else. I, I got the same one, the black, the black series. 
Yep. It's that's a beauty though. It's a great figure, great even better character. And um yeah, no, I I I see every time I go over to Walmart to Toys R Us, I see them on the pegs. But I, I just choose to save myself the the extra dollars. The, the Chirrut figure was there. I actually was over there today. It's like, oh, cool. I hadn't seen the Chirrut figure yet. Nah, you know what? I'm good. I don't need all these. Like Chirrut, like just the regular one at like nine bucks? Yeah, the three and three quarter. Yeah, I've I've seen him around. Not the Black Series though. No, no Black Series. Not yet. Okay. Yeah, that would I probably might have scooped up, but yeah, I've got the bug bad, man. Like I've been telling you lately. Like I don't know. Like this weekend, while I was watching Clone Wars, I I, I took out a I, I bought a sketch pad recently because I wanted to try and start drawing again. And instead of drawing, I started jotting down like just right off the top of my head, like the 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 characters, just the characters that I want most from Star Wars. And yeah, I came up with over like seventy something, like. And I'm not trying to be, like, super, like, I got to have everybody, you know? I was just saying, like, my favorite characters, kind of, or, like, the... Like, I want to get weird ones. I want, like, Cad Bane and, uh, like, Aura Singh and all these people I'm discovering in the Clone Wars, too, you know? Like, like you just... You're talking about three and three-quarter figures? Yeah. Well, I, I, we'll I mean, see what's you out must there. Have, you must have a whole bunch of the, that, that list of 70. Yeah, I do. I have some of them. But, uh, like, I really wanted Sabine Wren. And the, the six inch got that, like just stuff like that, you know, I, I did, I do like this weekend we went out for a bit and I just, no matter where it is, we go, like I got to hit up the toy section and just check it out, you know? I, I hear you. Every, every time I t- step into a, a store, if they have even a trace of a toy section, I'm running over there to see if, if, if any Star Wars stuff is there. And actually, you know what? I've seen a lot of the, like, the Hot Wheel vehicles and even the Black Series vehicles, they are blowing them out like there was the four pack today with the falcon a tie fighter pose x-wing and biggs x-wing and that i think originally retailed for like 30 bucks and it was on for 10 and i had it and i was carrying it around the store and then i was like no no i'm not doing this <laughs> and i put it back well, i know it's you. a great deal and i i i'm having a little bit of remorse and not picking it up and then again i know what i would do with this thing i would just i would take it open it up, the kids would play with it, it would, I'd step on it, I would kick it all over the house, get frustrated, and want my $10 back. So it is still on the shelf at Walmart where it will probably stay, and I will spend the $10 on something stupid like a submarine sandwich. That's actually a really good deal because I did go out and spend the whole, I think it was like 24 bucks, not this Christmas, the Christmas prior. But I do have the Falcon on my desk at work now. Yeah, that, well, that's what I thought. Maybe I could bring these to work and just have them decorating my desk. But uh, my my work area is cluttered enough, and it's uh, it's about to be downsized. <laughs> we're getting the, we're getting the squeeze at work. We're going from eight people in our area to ten or twelve. So Ooh. all of our desks are about to shrink. I'm not particularly pleased about that. But anyway, nobody, <laughs> no, no, literally nobody cares about that. Um. There's a whole there's a whole lot of news items this week, but st- I still feel like we're in a news black hole because for the numerous items that are out there, none of them are really, for me anyway, that worthy of talking about. So we'll blitz through as many of, of them as we can here before we get to some some better stuff. Um, but were you a fan of um, Epic Movie or that other crappy movie that these guys did? What was it called? I've done so many of them at this point, and they're no, I'm not a fan of any of them. I've seen maybe one or two, but like, yeah, no, 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 no. Right. So they're, they're these guys. Uh, I, I forget their names. Maybe they're not worth remembering. Uh, yeah, Jason Friedberg and Aaron Seltzer. So this this report from Variety.com. Um, They've worked on the Scary Movie franchise, they did Epic Movie, and they've done Vampire Suck. So these are all lampooning spoof satire movies, which can be funny, as evidenced by Spaceballs, the greatest spoof of all time, I think. <laughs> no, I'm on the same page there. Like, I have that written down. Right? I mean, we're, we're biased, obviously, but I Big time. can't think of a better spoof right now. Well, especially in, in regards to Star Wars... Mm. Well, Star Wars has had some good ones animation style with the Blue Harvest. 
and right. the robot chicken. Right. Those are quite good. Yeah, no, those are, those are pretty special. But anyway, th- these guys are working on a project called Star Worlds Episode XXXIVE equals MC squared. The Force Awakens the Last Jedi Who Went Rogue. I mean, come on. No, they're really just playing off something, obviously. Like, I mean, like, that, it's a, a, that's not... Cash that's grab. Not, well, sure, cash grab, but... I'm surprised they're actually even able to get away with it. Like, wasn't Seth MacFarlane told, like, no, like, you cannot do anything Star Wars? Yes, uh, but I think the way they do it is they actually use those character names. They use uh, the actors. They use... Um, the locations like this, these like uh, with space balls, with star worlds, it, it won't be Han Solo. It'll be Lone Star. You know what I mean? Like they, they can lampoon the themes and the archetypes and it, that's fair game. They're actually, they're, really? they're legally allowed to do that. It's when they start actually using the trademarks where it becomes, becomes an issue. And, and Disney Lucasfilm said, Nope. Sorry, Seth. Uh, so these guys, yeah, they can, they can do whatever they want. It's going to be very clearly uh, aesthetically and thematically Star Wars, but it's probably also going to be really stupid. I, I think there was a, a time when I would have thought things like Epic Movie and Vampire Suck and the Scary Movie franchise were funny. But I, I do remember seeing Scary Movie, and I'm like, this is not funny. No, you, you're, you're, you're not doing yourself justice there, bro. I don't think there was any time in your life where you would have laughed at any of Maybe like a joke or two in the movie, but... Yeah, I know you pretty well, and we were pretty pretty picky about our comedy action, all our movies. Uh, I guess. I mean, I I like to think I would have not ever enjoyed those movies, but who knows? You know, I was a teenager a long time ago now, so and so obviously, the, I mean, this this Star Wars thing is not aimed at me. It's probably not aimed at you. It's it's aimed at probably a much younger set, and they just hope that Star Wars fans of all ages will 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 take a peek. Um, but I don't know, honestly, if I will. I guess I'll obviously wait for the reviews, uh, but I, I hold out no hope for this. Yeah, I'm on the exact same page as you. Like, I, I don't want one. I don't think it's necessary. I totally agree that we're probably biased again, but Spaceballs is just the epitome of Star Wars spoofs. Like, I'd rather see, a much rather see, and I would totally accept a part two of that, <laughs> which I'm hopefully still looking forward to. I really still hope they do it. But no, like... You know, like you said, I'll wait for a review and who knows, you know, it's happening. So let's try and be positive about it. Maybe it will be funny and not try and make people like you and I look like losers. <laughs> but uh, like, seriously, well, it, won't look, it won't make fandoms look like losers. It'll make it's it's going to make the, the, the whole genre ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. Which is something I don't really. I mean, it's, it's fun. They, they, I mean, they, they can make fun of it. That's that's the point. Spaceballs made fun of it, too. Yeah, but it's um, laughing with, you know, not laughing so much at. Yeah, I mean, it's also like the the crassness of the humor, right? It's 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 dick and fart jokes on one side, and whereas, <laughs> you know, um, with Mel Brooks stuff, it's it's more clever. Yeah, like who are you gonna get to play in this? The Wayne's Brothers. You'd have Charlie Sheen in the role of Snoke. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Seriously, and think about that. You know, I was thinking about this when I wrote that note down. It just kind of popped in my my head there. How is Charlie Sheen not a part of Trump's cabinet? Have you thought about that? How did he get nominated? For, how did he not get nominated for a part of his cabinet? He's too level headed. I guess. He's too have too level headed for that gang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we I think we spent too much time talking about this this spoof. So let's move on to. Uh, the Rogue One home video release, the DVD Blu-ray, is set, apparently, according to um, JediNews.co.uk. Uh, they picked up a report from a Australian website, um, a, a retailer called Stack, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, they, they have a listing on their site which says April 5th is going to be uh, when we see Rogue One on Blu-ray. Which, you know, I thought that's, I mean, I thought that date sounded familiar, so I checked, and sure enough, uh, The Force Awakens came out on April 5th of last year. But then I thought, you know what, April 5th, 2016 can't be April 20, or the release can't be April 5th, 2017. The dates change, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
and these things usually drop on Tuesdays. So um, not that I'm correcting anybody, but Tuesday, April 5th, 2016 was when we saw uh, The Force Awakens, and tw- uh, Tuesday, April, f- or a- sorry, I'm getting all flustered here. April 4th, 2017, this year, is when we're probably going to see it. Not the 5th. The 5th is a Wednesday, and things don't tend to release on Wednesdays, as far as I know. No, you're right. uh, so, so look for it April 4th. And so, if that's true, it looks like Lucasfilm and Disney have, have seemed to have pigeonholed another date on the calendar, which they plan to own. So, uh, if that's true, if this report is true, you can then probably book April 3rd, 2018. As the, as the release date for The Last Jedi. The only question for me is, am I going to take, the, take those days off every year now? Yeah, it's kind of funny. I remember last year, like, I, I don't, I plan on getting Rogue One, but I definitely don't plan on being there, uh, you know, opening day to, to get the DVD or the Blu-ray. Like, I'll, I'll get it most likely that weekend, but I won't watch super... What? What? What do you mean you won't get it that day? Oh, well, there's a good chance I'll get it because let me just tell you if uh, I'll remind you what happened last year. Like, I was planning on getting it, and then I was like, you know what? No, I'll wait till the weekend. I'm gonna go shopping on the weekend anyhow. But then you were just like, yeah, I bought uh, I bought a copy, but I don't want this one. I want another one. So you're gonna take this one and pay me, and <laughs> That's uh, true. I'm gonna go get another one. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that works for me. No, no, I wanted the um, the BB-8, the BB-8 Walmart packaging. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right about that. But this year, I won't screw up. I will not screw it up this year. And I, I, I don't think I really care to have... Oh, you know what? Never mind. I'll probably change my mind once I see the different packagings. We'll get news on that, I would think, in the next couple weeks here. Be cool if there's a K2SO package. Oh, of course there will be. They know who the standout is from that movie. I hope it's a Walmart K2SO packaging. I'll probably pick that up, too. Uh, yeah, last year, I took a half day off. I stopped at, at my local Walmart on the way into work, snagged my copy, and headed home at lunch and, and cranked the volume that afternoon and watched The Force Awakens. It was beautiful. It was a great afternoon. Yeah, just touching back on uh, you know shopping, Star Wars, all that stuff, The Force Friday this, this year, September 1st, uh, still, we don't know if we actually do have the day off that day, but... No, we won't. We'll have the, it's always Labor Day Monday. Okay, so that being the case, do you still plan on getting, doing, like that I could see myself more like saying, you know, I'm coming into work late today and I, I'm going to Walmart or wherever it is to to get hooked up. Pending, of course, like we're going to, they're going to, they're going to tell you beforehand what they're releasing, right? That day or supposed to be releasing? Oh yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll know exactly what, what it's going to be. It's going to be the first wave of figures. It'll be accessories and, and you know, uh, guns and who knows what else? Yeah, but it's it's it'll be the first wave of everything. For episode eight, you mean? Yeah. Really? Well, that's what Force Friday is. I mean, it's it's always to promote the upcoming movie. Hmm. So we'll we'll have toys for episode eight in September of this year. But it, it it'll be familiar characters, I'm sure. It's gonna be it'll be Ray, it'll be Poe, it'll be Finn, there'll be probably a Kylo Ren figure. They they'll sneak in a few new characters that they want to get some traction for going for, but uh, you know, I, I wouldn't look for a Snoke figure, and I, I, I would say it's even money, a fifty-fifty shot that you get a Luke Skywalker figure in the first wave. Hmm. Because when do they? Do you know when they're supposed to drop that line with with Harrison Dula in the six inch? No, I don't. I don't know when. I want that. I want that one bad. Did you ever see the the Disney Infinity Hera? No. She's the only member of the Ghost crew, aside from Chopper, who didn't get her own Infinity figure. I love those little figures. I think the the design and the uh, the workmanship on those is is fantastic. I I love the design of those characters. What but it drives what me they? they're just they're just like little bunums that you put on your desk and stuff, right? Or whatever. <laughs> little bunums? Yeah. Our our Quebec listeners know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, the, the little figurines, they're for the, they're they're interactive. Like the little base carries some type of of data that you you would set them on to your console, and that character would become playable in the Disney Infinity game. 
Hmm. See, I'm so confused by that Disney Infinity game. Like, let's not get into it here, but we'll talk about no, it. No, you don't time. have to worry about it because it's it's discontinued. It's the game's over. So well, you fine. find you can find Disney Infinity figures now for like two dollars, five dollars. That's what I was just gonna say. I was at your local Walmart, like not even five minutes from your house, about two weeks ago. Hey, after I had met you at that Winterfest. Yeah, thanks for stopping in, by the way. I saw you. <laughs> Anyway, when we when we had left, that's where we said bye. Like, we stopped at Walmart, and there were like, God, there were they were like two dollars and ninety seven cents or something. And I was like, I wanted to just grab them all, but those are the kind of things I got to do when my wife's not looking. Yeah, no, I mean they're really cute, and I w- I wanted to have specifically the entire Ghost Crew, but there's no Hera, so that there will always be a gap, forever, in that team. So. Uh, I decided I, I the the completionist in me is never going to be happy, so I'm not getting any. So I I only ended up buying Sabine for Harley, and Darth Vader for Carter, and that's it. Actually, I came very close this weekend. This must be fascinating for people listening, listening to us just babble about Star Wars. Um, I almost bought the Anakin and Ahsoka kit, which comes with other stuff. It's in a big box, and it's got God knows what else in there. But I would only be interested in just the two figures. And it was thirty bucks. I was like, ah, I what, my, for is Disney Infinity. Yeah, I was real close. Like it was, uh, Stubaka showed us uh, some some pics of his Ahsoka collection, and you saw the Ahsoka figure. It's a great figure, and I really want it. But for thirty bucks, nah, not quite. Uh, I was actually showing Stubaka some. I told you about this recently, and I was so stoked. I bought this Savage Press in the wild, like a, a toy back from like whenever he came out, I guess 2011, I would say, 2010. Yeah. In season three. So I bought it from my local comic book shop guy, and he told me, he's like, look, I had all these just in the back, whatever. <laughs> local comic shop, shop guy who was about an hour away. Yeah. Goes to show how parents. pathetic our comic book pre- store presences are around us. True. Anyhow, I was like, yeah, I love this character. I'm going to grab him. So I was all happy. I took him home and just for shits and giggles, I kind of just took a picture and started Googling it, right? And yeah, it turns out this thing's like worth like, prices are ranging anywhere between $30 US up to 89 or like 69 uh, pounds or I mean, or euro, I don't know. I was just shocked. I was like, it just gave me this awesome like, woo! I was stoked. Yeah, it's cool when you find out that you actually have a treasure. Yeah, I love that. A similar thing happened, I don't think to the same scale, but uh, in reading Tarkin, uh, I wanted to learn more about Vader's TIE Fighter, or Vader's Starfighter in that book. Because I don't, I don't know all the ships by their actual model number, and I can't remember what it is, I, I, I don't remember. Uh, so I, I started digging into it on Google, and I found out that the ship he flies in, in the Tarkin novel is exactly the same as the Jedi Tie Fight, uh, Jedi Starfighter from Revenge of the Sith. It's just the all black model. Do you remember seeing that in stores? No. Anyway, it's really cool, and I'm like, wait a minute, I have that. And so, sure enough, I check my closet and I pull out one of the boxes, and still in the box is <laughs> Darth Vader's Sith Starfighter. I've had it for years. I, I completely forgot. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, so I, I I sniffed around and it's it's you know it's it's selling for like a hundred bucks, hundred and fifteen bucks in some places. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm sure you're gonna find lots of lots of stuff like that in your collection when you finally open it. You got to stop letting the kids open that stuff though. Well, I I have a box of like variant figures that will not get touched. Like I have the George Lucas figure from. I forget which celebration. I, ha- I have uh, the Darth Vader from New York Toy Fair 2002. Uh, I've got the, I've got a bunch of figures that are that are like these special releases from different cons. Uh, yeah, but still, I mean, at one point it was ridiculous. When we were living together, I think you bought for when all the prequels came out. I think you bought every character. No, I have. I th- I think I have all of the standard issue figures for for the force. Um, Revenge of the Sith. But I don't have all of the Attack of the Clones. I have most of the Phantom Menace, most of which I've opened. The only the only boxed, the only carded toys I have now, um, of course, are the, are the special ones. And 
the Revenge of the Sith line. I, I, I like that packaging, so I left it alone. But everything else I opened. All my wow. Power of the Force stuff from the 90s, I opened up all that stuff. Seriously? I, I, yeah, I left. A, I mean, I left a couple from each line, uh, just to just for posterity to have them if I need them. Yeah, for sure. I would have at least kept like you know, the main three or God. But no, otherwise, no. I cracked them all. Wow, I'm surprised. I, well, any I, it, was, it was when we were we were it was when we were moving, and I needed. I, I just wanted to reduce the number of boxes, and I had just box after box after box of carded figures. So. Oh, God. Moving sucks for that. Sure does. So I I did myself a little favor. Anyway, (sighs) moving on. Moving on. Uh, Star Wars Land, a place that uh, we hope to get to one day, but who knows. Uh, It is officially set to open in 2019, I guess in in time for Episode 9. And this is coming from uh, an earnings call. Uh, Bob Iger, I guess, was hosting an earnings call with different shareholders and investors in, in Disney. And it's also the same call in which he revealed that he has seen Episode Eight and called it the, the next uh, great installment in the Skywalker family saga. Is that, is that what he called it? Yeah. He basically, he said something along those lines, but I really like the fact that he mentioned the Skywalker family saga. Like, that, that kind of says a bit to me, you know, like, saying that Luke is the last Jedi and the continuation of his story is what this movie's about and this trilogy, which is a lot of people have kind of, you know, we've talked about it here. Like, is it okay for them to, to grow away from that, which eventually they will have to, but you know, what was this trilogy really about? Is it still about Luke? And it seems from what he's saying, yes, it is. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what they branded the saga way back when, when, when they first announced it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, he's just carrying the high-level wording forward. And, uh, I mean, yeah, obviously this is going to be heavy on Luke. So, yeah, no, I mean, nothing to see here, I don't think. It just he, he saw the most recent cut. Good for him. It's a hell of a perk for being the CEO of Disney. But, I, you know, I wonder what percent of the, of the current cut will actually be in the final cut. I don't expect anybody to have that answer at this point, but... Um, I mean, obviously, I, I think it's clear that what he saw is not going to be what he sees in December. No, for sure not. There's so much work left to be done. Yeah. So anyway, but I want to talk about Star Wars Land here just for a couple seconds. And so a knee-jerk reaction for me regarding the exhibits and the different rides and uh, the sets that they put up, my knee-jerk reaction is, well, these should all be familiar sets. They sh- there should be the cantina. There should be this, that, and the other from all the movies that we know. But then, I, you know, I, I sat back and, wait a minute, should it really be that way? Does it really need to be that way? And in, in retrospect, I don't think it should be. I think they should build mostly original stuff. And why? Uh, I, I think it's because you don't want any one set to become dated, right? Like, you don't want... You don't want to build say cloud city and then only have people of a certain age showing up to to this attraction and being excited about it like you don't you wouldn't want like 70 year olds you know you know in 20 years 20 years from now you don't want 70 year olds on cloud city going oh my god oh my god like you just want these things to be exciting for everybody all the time so uh, in that light i think it's better to build new stuff that just feels star wars what do you think I think that's an interesting point. I never thought about it like that before because, yeah, I was totally in the same, what you had said, like, uh, I would think that they're going to do the, like, I would I would like to keep it like 50-50 maybe or maybe even more so toward what we're comfortable with. Like, I want to go to the cantina. Yeah, that, that's my exception. They they have to do some sort of, sort of cantina, a functioning cantina. This is where you go and eat. Even like check, go check out the Dune Sea. And like <laughs> you just want them just to dump a bucket of like a acres of sand? Well, they can afford it. Uh, they have a lot, quite a bit of land. I'm pretty <laughs> sure they can make it look good. You know, you're go gonna to, pay go Disney prices to go stand in a a dune sea? No, like you know, you get on Jabba's barge <laughs> and whatnot. Just yeah, I I like the familiar aspect of it, but I know what you're saying, and it being dated. It'd be nice to see them do. Some new stuff, but I wouldn't want to see it all new. But I, I do agree with you. Like some new is definitely gonna 
keep things fresh. Yeah, I mean, here's the scenario, right? The year is 2040, and a family goes to Star Wars land, and little 10-year-old Timmy gets to go to uh, Jabba's palace. And Daddy, what's this? Or, or Grandpa, what's this? Well, Timmy, this is from The Return of the Jedi. This movie is now, geez, it would be a 57-year-old movie. This is Jabba's palace from when I was a, when I was your age. Ugh, this is boring. Like, where's... Who knows what Star Wars will be doing in 2040, but... That's, that, that's, that's, when, that's when, as a parent, you beat your child. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't you ever say that again? How dare you? But you know what I mean, right? Like, you, do, you don't want to have these specific locations that only speak to one generation of fans. And I know, no, but I I know Lucasfilm any- will do what they can throughout the years to keep all Star Wars fresh in people's faces to a certain degree. But at a certain point, like even kids today, they don't care about the original trilogy. I mean, they some do, obviously, but the pace of those movies is so much different from what viewers, young viewers today want and expect. Like The pace of A New Hope is completely different from that of The Force Awakens. And they just, they don't, kids today don't, don't have the attention span for it. No, that's one thing you are right. But still, I mean, if you're at... Star Wars land, I would think you're a fan of Star Wars, like not just the new movies that are coming out. You know, you if you're a Star Wars fan, you're gonna want to go back and enjoy the prequels, the original trilogy, all that stuff. Well, I mean, it depends. Yeah, it depends on what level, I guess, a fan. I, not, I don't want to put levels of of committedness on on fans, but I mean, young young kids who I would think this park is primarily going to be aimed at, even though we're going to nerdgasm when we eventually get there. Uh, but it, these things are designed for like eight to 10 year olds, right? Like they're not going to have a deep understanding of all things Star Wars. By the time they get to this park, they're going to know what limited stuff they've been exposed to in their, in their brief life. So they're going to want to see that. I'd I'd like to to be in a marketing meeting for them at this point. Like I want to know, like you just said, you're saying eight to ten, whatever. I don't know if that's so much the case with this park. They know that people like you and I are dying to go there. Like I would like to see in their marketing team what kind of age bracket they're really focusing on. Because Star Wars is for everybody, man. No, I, I of course I, I I get that, but they're not gonna build a park like that and not have it be totally geared towards young kids like we're gonna go and we're gonna poke around and oh my god it's just like being in in the galaxy far far away and we'll find that amazing but it's 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 you they, they're they gonna do things to set the hook for kids that's what it's all about well the, the the first the first thing i read i think in that article was that there's gonna be an interact you're gonna basically get to fly the falcon how cool is that man yeah i'm sure that will be an absolutely immersive experience by the time they get done with it and, and they'll update it over the years and it'll just get better and better but yeah i mean that's that's going to be incredible that, that's but again the thing say, about the... say 20 years from now or 30 years from now if, assuming everything is still going swimmingly is it still going to be the falcon or will it be the next cool star wars ship mm, it's hard to think i mean the falcon's legend at this point i don't think but either way, you keep things interactive and immersive, and you keep up with the technologies. Oh, and they will. I mean, there's no question. They, so they will continually like, update this thing. As the movies change, yes, they'll probably change the park around a bit, but the classics, I don't think, are really going to go too, too far. Now, you're probably right. To a certain degree, I think you're probably right. I think there's a statute of limitations on everything, and at a certain point, all bets are off the table. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, it, it's going to be cool. This this world is going to be fantastic. I can't wait to hopefully one day check it out with, with the kids. Now let's just hope there's no ban put on the park or something. Uh, I don't think you have to worry about that. Too many people to shake upside down and get their money. <laughs> so Rogue One at the box office has finally leaked its way into the top 20 on the all-time worldwide box office list and it uh, it, it just it just 
barely eclipsed uh, Pirates of the, of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. And um, you know, it now sits at a 1.047, almost a 1. Point, let's just call it 1.05 billion globally. So that now sits uh, 20th. Still number seven. Yeah. Well, I mean, it sits, it sits 20th all time. That's uh, international and domestic. Not bad for a movie that uh, had a bunch of boycotters, right? Dude, those boycotters are such a joke. Like, just I should just stop talking about them. Like, I, they had no bearing whatsoever on this film. Like, we all knew it was going to do well, and I think it's sur- surpassing a lot of expectations. And I think it's right now it's six or seven million dollars shy of catching the Dark Knight. No. Uh, yeah, but it won't do that. I mean, remember we talked about this a month or so ago, and I, I was, that was, was I like think, that was my million. thing. Like, I, it's gonna catch whatever, whatever, but it's not gonna it it won't it'll run out of steam and time uh, before it catches uh, the Dark Knight, and it it won't. I don't think it, it's it's gonna pull in. I mean, it's crawling at this point. It's only pulling in scraps at this point. Uh, I'd so still it, like to go see it one more time. Like, think about it. Everyone listening. Come on, like, think about it. When are you really going to get to see this movie again in theater? Who knows? Like, go see it one last time. I, I, yeah, I would like to, too. I mean, I, have you, I haven't even bothered checking my local listings to see if it's even still playing. Have you? No, but... Uh, <laughs> it's a good place I, to start. I would assume, I'm assuming it is. Um... I would think so, but sparingly and probably not at the opportune times. Uh, but if hey, you want to organize that, I might be down to check it out one more time before we have to go, uh, before we're forced to wait until April before seeing it again. Let's do it. It's a plan. It's uh, on. You, you put it together. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, like I said, we gotta, we're going to blitz through a bunch of these things. Uh, Mads Mikkelsen spoke about uh, Rogue One reshoots and a uh, potential return as Galen Erso. And uh, I just want, do, do you think, we, do we need more Galen Erso, whether it's in print or on screen or in Rebels? Is that necessary or has his, his story been told? Uh, when I first thought of it originally, I said, okay, yeah, maybe he could work in, in Rebels, you know, like that could work. But no, it could, would kind of negate a lot of the story about of Rogue One, you know, like why would we need to see him in Rebels? Like if he spoke with the the Ghost Crew, then the the Rebellion would already have some kind of inside information. So that didn't really make sense to me. So like you had said, I think there it would be a shoehorn kind of thing. They'd be shoehorning him in. Uh, I'd like to see him. I think he's a great actor. He's got a great voice, all that stuff. But I just don't see how they can make it work. Uh, having Red Catalyst. The story's been told, man. Like, what do we need to know about that time frame where he was working for the Empire? Like, yeah, okay, he put on a good front. He was designing something or the architect of this massive thing that he planned to fail. But how interesting can that really be? You know, like, how interesting can you make that for, like, a, a movie or or anything, you know? Like, yeah, no, it's, just, it's over. It's done. <laughs> you see him at his at his table, just drawing, like looking over his shoulder, like dun, 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 you know, like yeah. There's, there's, I mean, yeah, like you said, he's he's a good character. Mads Mikkelsen's a fantastic actor. He did a great job, but there's, I don't see any need whatsoever for any more Galen or so anywhere. And any, anywhere. If anyone watching the movie is craving more Galen or so, just read Catalyst, like, just kind of completes everything like the story's there i mean i i think that there's there's no i don't think there's any way we see him in a in a movie in the future where i think we're done with that particular era on the big screen and in relation to the death star so forget that maybe they do revisit it somehow in a comic or in a novel in which case i think i'd be okay with it but as, yeah, yeah. You know, to bring him into Rebels, I think, no, forget it. There's there's no way, there's no need. Everything we need to know about Galen and his role in the galaxy is told. There's, I think there's no need at all to bring this guy back. Yeah, agreed. The story's told. Uh, she, he might be in a flashback in the Jin novel that's coming out. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a, no, that's a good point. He, you could easily see Jin having a flashback to her father. And her mom, for that matter. Stardust. Uh, so, and he said something else that was interesting. So he, he was having a chat with IGN, and he, ha- he was talking about the reshoots. So I'll read his quote here. It said, I had one day of reshoots, and that was just basically a few shots on a big platform when it was raining, and I see my daughter again when she's grown up. And that was mostly just technical stuff and a little story thing just to clarify the story a little bit more. And that's what reshoots are for, and I think that's quite normal. I had one day, and I know other people had more, but you really never get that chance very often to see the film and go, you know, guys, we could have done a little better or a little clearer. We never get that chance, and I think it's a beautiful thing that we were able to go back and do that. And I thought, well, didn't you, did you did he contradict himself in this statement where he said, uh, and that's what reshoot, reshoots are for, and I think that's quite normal. So he's, he's normalizing reshoots, but then later he says, but you never really get that chance very often. So which is it? Do, do, are reshoots normal or are they, do they not happen very often? I, I, think, I, I again, I don't want. I'm just poking fun. I, we don't really need to overthink this or hold him, hold his feet to the fire. But I, I thought I think it's probably more at the the scale that Star Wars is. You know what I mean? Like other films, yeah, you can do reshoots. Like you're sitting in a cafe somewhere, but to have to do Star Wars reshoots, like I heard they had to build rebuild like forty percent of the sets or something. Yeah, making Star Wars had that report where like forty percent of the movie was was being redone. I think at the time we were like, "Whoa, that's that's a bit much," but um, it sounds like that was actually what happened. Uh, but anyway, so uh, we're done with Galen. I think at least you and I are at least are, have had our fill. There's no need to bring that character back. I won't really complain if they do, but I will feel like it's it's a bit of shoehorning. Galen is Snoke. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that, that that's a bad one. Yep, they're all bad. They all suck. <laughs> they all suck. Um. Anyway, so some some casting news for the Han Solo movie, and um, Phoebe Waller Bridge rumored to be in the movie as a CG character. And and first question: Do you know who this actress is? Unfortunately, no. I I looked at the picture. I read her bio and all that. It's interesting, but yeah, never. She looks not familiar whatsoever. No, I have no idea who she is. I have no idea the work she's done. Uh, so as, as much as I'd like to say, sit here and say, what a brilliant piece of casting, I can't. I have no clue who this, who this actress is. Uh, from what I've seen on Twitter and in, in social media, people s- seem very, very positive about this move. So I'll go with that. Uh, but again, she's it's apparently in a uh, CG motion capture type suit. So who knows? That's yeah, interesting. Another just another one to the list. Yep, and uh, Variety had that report. So hopefully she joins the cast and plays a, a cool new memorable character. Uh, but the big rumor, also uh, being carried from Variety, is that Tandy Newton from Westworld and from a bunch of other things. She's a very, very famous actress, uh, is in talks to be part of the Han Solo movie. And this, this, this is a cast that just keeps getting cooler. Yeah, big time. Like, I, I love Thandie Newton. I've seen her in quite a few things. Like, I'm a big fan of Westworld. Huge fan. Huge. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, she's done a lot of stuff. Like, there was this movie Shade that came out in about 2003 that... Just a daughter in about grifting. Yeah, so I could she, again. It's just one of those characters or one of those actresses that, like Woody Harrelson, it just seems like a perfect piece of the puzzle again. Like they they are knocking the casting of this out of the park. Anyhow, yeah. I mean, the first time I saw her was in the second Mission Impossible movie, and like I had never heard of her, and I'd never really seen her before. But she was she's just jaw-dropping gorgeous and turns out she's a fantastic actress too who would have guessed um and of course in westworld i've seen her in a few episodes and uh yeah great call i mean she's she's got that ability to um be be whatever you need her to be she's a bit of a chameleon as an actress and 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 i'm sure that if she ends up uh snagging the role that uh 
She'll do a great job. Yeah, and whatever whatever role she's going to be playing. I could see her maybe being... Yeah, she's kind of of the right age, so it would kind of maybe make sense to maybe be partnered up with uh, Woody Harrelson somehow. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. I mean, that's, of course, low-hanging fruit. She could be anything at any point, but... Uh, yeah, I, I hope to see this bit of casting come true. Yeah, agreed. Uh, all right, so how about uh, we talk about something of actual substance now? Rebels season three finale and some other uh, episode descriptions. Uh, got this from Making Star Wars. Who got it from once again Jedi Bibliotech? And so Rebels is back next week, and we've already spoken about um, episodes. I think sixteen and seventeen. Uh, but this, we've we've got titles and descriptions for episodes uh, 18 through 22. So we'll take a quick look at those. Uh, so March, this one, episode 18 from season 3, is going to be called Secret Cargo. And the description is, when a routine refueling mission goes wrong, the Ghost crew find themselves transporting an important rebel leader across the galaxy pursued by Imperial warships. So no surprise, this is going to be... Rebel Mon Mothma. Yeah. And we'll find out if that little cameo that I think is going to come true is, is actually Gold Leader. Yeah, you're right. We'll find out. But yeah, this is, I mean, this is absolutely Mon Mothma, which is going to be really cool. It'd be nice to see her on screen, and I, I don't know for sure, but I hope they've got um, Genevieve O'Reilly nailed down for that, for the, to do the voice. No, it's, it's Steven Stanton. <laughs> <laughs> Of course it is. Why not? Um, and then episode 19, Double Agent Droid. Chopper and AP-5 team up to infiltrate an Imperial station to steal needed codes. But an, but an Imperial specialist turns the droids against the crew to cause chaos. This sounds like a... It feels like you can take this this description a couple ways. Like, Is there a, a droid that turns AP-5 and Chopper against the crew? Is that what I'm reading? I don't know necessarily if it's a droid, some kind of specialist, someone who knows droids. Basically, yeah, they're they're turning, does something to my poor boy Chop, an AP five. Yeah, that's that doesn't sound very good. Yeah, it kind of sounds like a bit of a filler episode to me, to be honest. <laughs> well, you said the F word. Careful now, people are gonna hate on you for that. It's Miller time. Uh, I wonder if whatever they do. Uh, th- this is how they get, how the Empire learns about the uh, location of the Rebel base. They they squeeze it out of these two droids. Very possible. I mean, uh, AP5, I think his protocols in logistics and inventory or, I can't remember. Something like but that. Some, yeah. He's a, he's a robotic stock boy. And then, um, anyway, that, that sounds like it could be... It could be one of those F word episodes, or it could be pretty important. No, you're right. Well, whenever you get your hands on a droid, yeah, there can be they could be have a lot of info in there, and I th- I'm pretty sure Chop does at least. Oh, of course he does. Uh, episode twenty, Twin Sons. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, that surprising. Went, that went Very immediately, surprising. immediately comes to mind. Twin Sons. We're going to Tatooine, right? Uh, it says it in the description, basically, that, uh, yeah, he, he's Ezra. Yeah, reacting to a and... vision of Maul, Ezra defies Hera and Kanan to travel to a remote planet in hopes of stopping the former Sith Lord from carrying out his plans. Interesting that Ezra is going on his own to Tatooine to stop Maul. So Kanan's not going to be part of this. Uh, this looks like we're, where we're going to get Kenobi versus Maul. There's no, I don't think there's anything elsewhere to indicate it in in the uh, season finale. So this looks like if we're going to get Maul versus Kenobi, this is it. Yeah, which is kind of odd to me. I would really would have really thought they would have ended the season on that note. But uh, who knows? They might. There's still more descriptions to come, so more speculation. But uh... but what do, you, what do you make of Ezra on his own? I mean that to me, makes this a real wild card. We know, obviously, we know Obi-Wan comes out of this, whatever happens, alive. But boy, oh boy, Ezra there on his own. Well, I that, think, that, I keep think reading that changes the, things. 
somewhat. It's going to be a tough time for him. It's, uh, who knows? There's so many things that can happen in this episode. Like I, I've spoken about Luke before in the past and Ezra possibly maybe watching over him or whatever. Who knows? Who knows? There's so much going on. But if, you know, the if the further you read these character uh, episode descriptions, uh, you see that Ezra's back with the crew at one point. So right. I, I, I don't think he's taking off with Maul. But something interesting, it's, it's going to be a heck of an episode, but I'm, I am, again, surprised that they're not finishing this season with Obi-Wan. Well, I, you know, I, seems... I think the reason for that is that would be, you know, season two ended wrapping up Ahsoka versus Vader, which is, yeah, we all loved it. We lapped it up, but that's not the ghost crew. This, this show is about the ghost crew. And, and yeah. arguably, the best episodes from from uh, from Rebels have not centered around the Ghost Crew. It's been about Ahsoka and Vader. No, you're right. And so the, I I I I would be I would side with the showrunners Filoni and uh, Justin Ridge if they decided like we're not going to do this two years in a row. We're not going to end a season on a storyline that doesn't have to do with the Ghost Crew. Either, either there's a. I hope there's either a conclusion or they still leave it open ended so that we can possibly see Obi Wan again. But yeah, you're right. They they got to give Thrawn some love, and that's a great way to to end this season as well. Will be, you know, seeing the rebellion, the the, the wrath of Thrawn, if you will. <laughs> the wrath of Thrawn. You may have just titled the episode. Oh baby. Um, yeah, so I mean, looking ahead to the to the season finale, part one, zero hour part one, airing March twenty fifth, the day after my birthday, It'll be a good end to a birthday weekend, I think. Um, in final preparations for their attack on Lothal, Phoenix Squadron's plans are disrupted when Grand Admiral Thrawn discovers their location. Hmm. Maybe from information that he pulled from a couple of droids. Very possible. Not looking good, though. So I, I I wonder if this attack on Lothal doesn't happen. I mean, do we do we see anything in the trailer that that indicates that it does? Mm, not that I can remember. No. I'm coming at this really uneducated now. It's been a while since I watched that trailer, but I, I don't seem to remember anything taking place on Lothal from the trailer. Anyway, so it looks like Thrawn definitely he obviously knows where the, where the rebels are, and we did see clips of that. Um, yeah, so you, I guess you can see that episode ending with the Imperial fleet showing up on at, on uh, in the skies above Adalon, and then that's where you swallow hard and wait for part two to start. Yeah, I and, just want to know how much of the actual rebel fleet is there. If it's like the whole, because that's what he's been waiting for. He wants to get everyone together at the same time before he strikes right right yeah you want he wants to crush them all at once so um i guess you could imagine the entire the entirety of the rebel fleet massing at adalon before uh, striking out to lothal and then thrawn saying yep it's go time uh but then we, we zip ahead to zero hour part two trapped on atalon with the rebel base under siege Hera and Kanan fight to keep the squadron alive as Ezra attempts to rally help from an unexpected source. You want to take a stab at that unexpected source? I can take a few stabs. I, uh, I don't know if any of them will be right, but I could say maybe back to Obi-Wan. Keep it interesting. Just not give Obi-Wan that one episode. You know, maybe it's that time. Obi-Wan, we, we need you now, you know. Well, then that would... That, 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 I mean, I don't want to say you're wrong because it's obviously possible, but then that completely pulls the rug out from Mon Mothma in Rogue One when she says uh, to Bail Organa, your your Jedi friend. You remember that part in, towards the tour? Is it towards the end? Yeah. Or it's, right. it's before they no. scramble the fleet, right? No, so, it's, it's, yeah, it's about the midway point, maybe. Yeah, maybe two thirds of the way through. It's before they scramble the fleet to, to Scarif, but. Um, 
Yeah, I, it, it seems clear to me that when Mothma asks Bail about Obi-Wan, that that is Obi-Wan's return to action. Okay, there was... The Bendu came to mind, but I don't think... I don't think he can be swayed. I think he's gray. He's just like, well, hey, man, that's what's going to happen is going to happen. Well, unexpected. That would be an unexpected source. I think that's a good call. I can also see it possibly being Maul. Yeah. If he's still alive. That was my guess. Or this wouldn't be unexpected, though. Callus. Yeah, Ezra knows that Callus is Fulcrum. That from I think the episode where they, they kind of got all, all trapped together in that uh, the Imperial factory. Yeah, and he sees him in the elevator. It's so good. After two, he's like, "Make it look believable." And he's just like, "Boom!" <laughs> like just nails him. Yeah, chucks him through the glass. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, that that's Callus. Let, let's rank it. Let's power rank this. Bendu, Maul, and Callus. Who 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 is it? Who's least likely of those three? I want to say Callus, just because it's not unexpected. Like we know, he knows. We know that he knows. So why would that be unexpected? Uh, I guess maybe unexpected from whose point of view? Yeah, you're right. Well, I want to say at the top of my list for sure is Maul. I think that would be my number one at this point. Whew, that's yeah. I mean, I, I think yeah. For me, Bendu is least likely. Redemption for Maul. Ooh, yuck! No. Yeah, Ugh. I know it's not gonna happen. It might though. You never know. Redemption for Maul. Ugh. Where's that? That would be out of left field. Big time. Ugh. No way. Uh, so, Bendu least likely, and then for me, it's Maul, and I think I think Callus uh, is probably the most likely. Hmm. But the Maul, the Maul option is most fascinating, I think. Yeah, I agree. Because that means something happened in the Twin Suns episode. Yep. Like, I think both both force options are most interesting to me just because what can Bendu do, you know? Yeah, I mean, seeing what he would or could do would certainly be interesting, but I think it then completely negates the role of Bendu. Yeah, you're right. Um. Yeah, no, I... I the the mall thing is really interesting because then it really does question what did what did like something ha- would have, would have had to have transpired between Ezra and Maul on Tatooine. Well, I think already a lot has transpired for them between them. Anyhow, like well, they do have almost some, fe- they, they do have an unhealthy connection with each other. I I feel like Maul has a bit of a soft spot for him because Maul could have killed him many times. Well, he, but he's he always wants, said he wants his apprentice. Yeah, but he, even the last time they met, he, was, he just left him there. Like he's like, I'm out. Like, well, maybe he doesn't feel like Ezra's a danger to him. But he just uh, was the last episode was what with the the witches of Dathomir, right? And he he, he could have like done something with Ezra, but he just leaves him behind. He's like, forget you. Like, but he he could have like forced him or killed him or. No, he's not going to do that to Ezra. He, he's, I think he still holds out hope for Ezra. I mean, just like Vader with Luke and Empire, he could have killed him, but he didn't. <laughs> yeah, he's like, first we start with the stubby fingers. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I, mean, I, I think there's a, there's a real potential curveball waiting for us there. With, I mean, maybe Ezra makes him some kind of promise. Yeah, Ezra's pretty good at stuff like that. I'll join you. I'll we'll, we'll work together. I don't know. Just yeah, let let's leave this old man here alone. Let's leave Kenobi by himself and let's get out of here. And we we can work together. We can figure this out. I, I'm still super curious to find out if if Luke is in the least mentioned in these episodes in that episode. 
he might be alluded to. He'll never by name. We'll never I, I see still, him. I still hold out hope that we'll see him. Even if he doesn't interact with anyone, it could be Obi-Wan and Ezra observing Luke, Luke, right? Like, just saying, like, that boy is, like, the chosen one's son or whatever, you know? But why, then why, I mean, this is what Ezra's after, right? Ezra, Ezra wants the key to destroy the Sith. And if he finds out that that's Luke, he's just not going to be like, oh, that's cool. Let's let's move along. You never know. Obi-Wan's, Obi-Wan taught Anakin... If anyone's going to talk any sense into Ezra, it could be Obi-Wan. I, mean, I suppose so. That, I mean, that, that's obviously true, but I, I feel like Ezra is kind of possessed. He he really wants this key to destroying the Sith, and if he knows it's Luke, he's going to want Luke's participation. And Obi-Wan's not going to let him have it. Because It'll don't be forget, uh, in A New Hope, Luke has no idea what the Force is. So Luke can never get too close to the situation. Well, that's why I always said, like, I always saw this episode in my head for some reason of now knowing that this isn't even a two-parter, which is kind of, again, disappointing. I can understand it not being the season finale, like we just discussed with Thrawn being in the season and the grander rebellion that we need to touch upon and finish that story, too. Like, I, I have always, I don't know, I always just saw this Luke and Ezra talking and Ezra knowing who he is, but unable to tell him of the Force or, you know, them just being boys. They're born on the exact same day of the exact same year. Like, I think, uh, Yeah, I think Ezra's like a couple days earlier. Aren't they born? Isn't he born on? They're both born on Empire Day, no? Um, no, you're right. Um, no, I think Luke and Leia are born a couple days later. I think the Empire has been established for a day or two. Once they're born, or once the empire is established, yeah, it's a, maybe a few days after order. But I mean, 66. who cares? I mean, it's 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 splitting or it's splitting hairs, right? They they're hmm. both born within forty eight hours of, of each other. Yeah, it's. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I I can't wait for rebels to come back. It looks like there's gonna be some action packed episodes, but it looks like the the Maul Kenobi thing may not even wrap up this year. Very possible. I can't see it being. That's like. You just said it. Like, I can't see it satisfying us as fans in one episode and just, be, like, wrapping it all up right there. Like, I thought this was going to have its own little story arc, you know? I mean, I, I'm... That, that means I have to deal with more Maul. I have to wait for to season four to get more Darth Maul, or Maul, as it were. I love Maul. Yeah, I know, but it, I feel like... Uh, I do I like the character. What's... I think it's just a little much now with him. I just love what the character has become. Like, he really hasn't been in Rebels all that much. Like, no, he hasn't. Maybe f- four or five episodes max. Yeah, and I, I love that. what Sam Witwer does with him, too. Like, the voice, just getting to know him instead of the silent type. Like, I love the voice and how smart he is. See, that, that's the part I still struggle with. And I've, I've mentioned this before, but from what he was in The Phantom Menace, with, which was just... A henchman. Palpatine's tool. Well, he was Palpatine's apprentice, no? Like his he ah, still he yeah, held the he title was... Darth. Like sure. that just doesn't come for with <laughs> for nothing. Well sure it does. I mean Palpatine just said, Yeah, yeah, you're 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 Darth Maul now. And it, it you know, he he gave him the promotion for no reason. It, it just to keep him happy. I'm sure there was lots years and years of training there, man. Oh I, and yeah, but Palpatine and... would Palpatine kept him on the hook and needed him to do what he did in The Phantom Menace. It all worked out to plan for Palpatine. I think it was all about using Maul. And he was just he was just intended to be a weapon. And then he got he he was really popular. And yeah, I mean they yanked him out of uh Well, they they put him back in Clone Wars, back in Rebels. I, I just have trouble accepting or reconciling. How he's gotten, you know, from chopped in half to surviving that to living for another twenty years between the two series, and still kicking around shirtless, mind you. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, it, it's it's been weird. And the whole time, what he's just surviving on his hate of Obi Wan. I don't know. I have I have trouble with it. I'm I'm satisfied with the arc of the character, even though I struggle with it. But I'm I'm ready to just close the book on him. 
I was right there on the same page with you. It was really, really hard for me to accept him back. When I found out, like, I wasn't as big as I am now into Clone Wars when it came out, unfortunately. But when I heard that Maul was back, I was like, this is a joke. Is this amateur hour? Yeah, it, it felt weird, but at the same time, I was like, cool. All right, let's see where this goes. I, I would love to see more Obi-Wan Maul. And it, it all, I mean, it's all worked out more or less, but I, I feel like we're beating a dead horse now. It's, it's just a little bit too much Maul. We've got the Marvel comic Maul running, which I haven't checked out yet. And maybe I never will, but ugh, I let's let's not just not go back to the same well too often. Uh, anyway, so Rebels is back next week. Can't wait for that. We'll have. Uh, well, I mean, we're going to break down the episodes as we always do, and hopefully, there's some some meaty episodes instead of uh, what, what was the last one where we just kind of blitz through it in like eight minutes. There was Warhead and. Oh, the Trials of the Dark Saber was the last one, right? Yeah, that was a beaut. That was a big one. Yeah, that was no, that was a good one. But there was been, there's been a couple episodes recently where I was like, well, is there anything to talk about? Eh, okay, let's see what we can do. And eight minutes later, we're done. All right, so I mean, just before we wrap up with Rebels, I want to backtrack here for one second. Now, so if Ezra is pulling in some unexpected help, let's just play with the idea for a second that it's Maul. Bear with me here. Could Maul take out Thrawn somehow? I mean, whether in person or not, uh, could Maul do that? And then where that would lead is, you know, would, would they take out Thrawn so quickly after re- introducing a really popular character from Legends? And then Season 4 would give us uh, some kind of, another Maul versus Vader thing. They would bring uh, Vader back into the mix as we move closer to Rogue One. And then instead of uh, Thrawn... As the mastermind, you now get Tarkin, and you start getting re- much closer to the events of A New Hope as as the big bad guys of the Empire start start uh, to take the four. Um, it's an interesting theory, but I think you had touched upon something because I had been thinking about this as well recently, and I just don't think they're going to get rid of Thrawn that easily. I think he's going to survive this season. I don't know what's in store for him in the future. Like you said, obviously we never see him again in canonical stuff. So I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think he survives this season. And I don't know about the thr- uh, the Tarkin thing because we've seen Tarkin in Rebels and very sparingly. Don't get me wrong, sparingly, but it, it made an impression. Uh, two guys get their heads lopped off, and he's just like, mm-hmm. That's the way we roll. Yep. So he, he he's kind of just as serious. I would like to see more of his character as well. Perhaps maybe working with Thrawn. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I just... I don't see Thrawn biting the dust this, this season. No, I think I agree. I just... You know, I'm thinking that maybe it's a slim possibility. Of course, anything's possible. Uh, but anyway, I want I want to move on to some this topic that I've been it's been burning a hole in the back of my mind here for a while. <clears throat> so w- when we pick up with our our heroes in the Force Awakens, all we don't know anything about the gap in between. We know a little bit from Bloodline and Aftermath and and um, Shattered Empire, but we don't know much about Ben's Ben Solo Ben Organa's turn to evil. We don't know exactly when it happened. We don't know exactly why. Uh, we don't know exactly when Luke's Academy was destroyed. Eh, I guess we kind of know. Uh, we don't know the exact details surrounding that. Han and Leia's split and and Luke's exile. We know they all kind of happen at the same time, and it's all because of what happens with Ben. So, I mean, these are all major moments. And so do you think that these events will be explored in canon at some point? And if so, uh, when and in what format? Uh, the when part I haven't really thought about, but I agree with you. I, I want to know it all. I think each one of these points is very interesting and not so much that we have to delve super deep into them, like uh, the Han and Leia split. I would like to see it being alluded to in a novel, not necessarily the focus of a storyline, but 
get some explanations in in another novel, like somewhere somewhere in the future, like just explaining why exactly Han left or maybe even Leia left. You know, you don't know. Well, I think uh, I think I think Han probably flew the coop. Yeah, I almost I still see it being a mutual thing though, like kind of like maybe more in the sense that I I think it's best you leave now. Okay. <laughs> I'll do that. Chewie, let's do this. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, these these events are all super intertwined. So I if you tackle one of them, you have to t- you kind of have to tackle all of them. No, uh that's a good point actually cuz I I was looking at it like I had written them down. Okay, I said that Ben's turn. I totally want to see it. Yes, and uh, I think it could be the basis of a whole novel. Like that whole, his whole turn. There's a lot of meat, a lot of storyline there. That I think it could be stretched into a novel. But uh, that that it would also include the destruction of Luke's academy, right? Not necessarily. They, I think they could touch back on that. Like he can reminisce about it a bit. But it's possible because I, what I had had, I'd had uh, Luke's academy and his exiling of himself intertwined as one story. Because Luke exiling himself, you you can't really make again a story solely out of that. I don't think. Like yes, there's a lot of meat on the bone there too. But I would think it'd be quite a bit of a boring story if he was just like, I'm leaving. Like. Well, yeah, that, that's what I mean. Like, that, that, if you make a story about Ben's turn to evil, I mean, the main thing about his turn to evil is is what we assume to be him destroying Luke's academy, and then the follow up from that is that Luke leaves and Han and Leia split up. I, I, that's why I don't think you can. I don't think these these four those four events can be separated into different stories. Maybe I'm wrong. No, you're a hundred percent right. Like. I didn't even think of it like that. Like, I connected two of them. Yes, again, they're all part of the same event, if you will, but why not? Like, this would be perfect fodder for a novel. You have four major story arcs here. Okay, I mean, so obviously you're going novel, right? I mean, I, I think that's the natural place. Yeah, we're not, it's, not, it's not being done live action. I wouldn't see it animation. And it, Yeah, it's too heavy to do animation style unless it's, it's like a, a boundary-pushing... Like we're bringing everybody back in a in a almost photo real animation style, but I think I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, yeah, so uh, traditional animation like Rebels or Clone Wars, nah, they're not going to do that heavy story there. I think obviously you're down to comics and and or novel. I think. Uh... Comic wise, I think it's just too grand a story now that you got these four, these four arcs in there. I, th- I don't think a comic can cover it fully. And like, if you do a mini series, you can't really have a. Well, you can. It would be like a twelve part mini series, in my opinion, though. You know. Yeah, I don't know. Would it, would, could they do something different? Could they make it like graphic novel style? They don't typically I'm, I'm do that. I'm thinking maybe, maybe you take uh, the destruction of the academy as a comic. Do like a four part comic on that leading up to Ben's turn and answering the rest of the questions, kind of, in a novel. Like, spread it around, make people buy all kinds of different things. Yeah, because, I mean, that, that's kind of a good point. There's a, there's a lot there, right? So if you can just parcel it out and make people buy four things instead of one novel. That's a cynical way of looking at it, but... Uh, it's, like, not, uh, it's, the- not, it's not... It's not a positive Off way can be like it's just a, a a lead up to a comic series leading up to this cool novel. Yeah, maybe. That's just a thought I had. But yeah, I think we kind of just landed in the same place that it's it's something it's fo- perfect fodder for a novel. Who gets it though? Oof, Claudia Gray, who's done such good work. Timothy Zahn, who Star Wars fans trust almost implicitly. I think Claudia Gray at this point, like she's she's been tackling that time period, so why not? Uh, she has through Bloodline, yeah, sure. I mean, she also did original trilogy stuff with Lost Stars. I mean, I, obviously, I'd be very happy if if this book was assigned to her, or maybe that's, they that's a, or maybe they pull in somebody different. 
That's a teenage novel too, eh, Lost Stars? Yeah. Yeah, I, was, I bought it the other day, and I was like looking for it everywhere in the Star Wars section. And I finally asked, and she's like, "Yeah, follow me." I'm like, "What?" And I bought it in hardcover too. Yeah, same here. It's a good book, really good book. Uh, okay, it's time for ads edition this week. We're, we're getting on here, man. We're well, well over an hour, so uh, we're well overdue for ads edition. So let's let's hear what. Um, our, our favorite night of the Commonwealth has to say this week. Hello, boys. Hope everyone well. So my question this week uh, concerns the forthcoming Han Solo movie. And I wonder whether the marketing of this film will, if at all, be different in any way. Uh, do you think Lucasfilm will take a different approach to how they market it, as this will be the first proper standalone film compared to the saga films and rogue one so have a chat about that and i look forward to listening take care bye thank you ads little little short question this week thank you sir appreciate your input as always uh so Corey, what um what can they do what can lucasfilm do differently with the han solo movie that may be something we haven't seen before you know, I, I got zero, zero marketing ideas on this, but you ads makes a, a good point. Like, I would love to see them do something different with this movie. This movie's going to be huge. It's different. Uh, there's, it's, it seems like it's going to be so cool. Uh, Marketing-wise, I, I, I have no ideas, but I, I do hope that they do do something that's maybe not necessarily never been done before, but... Something that's like interactive, maybe, or uh, just just out there and different. Like, because I I think this movie is going to be a whole new Star Wars too. You know? Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to have a much different feel from anything we've ever seen. And I I, I keep going back to the buzzword of fun. I I think I, I, this movie is going to be a, just an absolute joy. It's going to be so much fun to watch this movie. And I think I think right now somewhere in the world they're having a lot of fun making it. And I think the the people on set, the actors and the crew, I think they're having a lot of fun. Uh, so I I think you know, when they get around to doing celebration, which I assume they'll do another one next year with um, with the Han Solo movie in mind. And I, you know, instead of like, sizzle reels. Like that's we, we, what we got for Rogue One and The Force Awakens. I, I assume we'll get an, another one for The Last Jedi. I think that's the rumor anyway. So instead of a, a sizzle reel at uh, the 2018 celebration, maybe they do like a blooper reel cut in with, at, with some other sizzle reel type stuff. Uh, just, just to convey the... the lightheartedness yeah. The, yeah the lightheartedness maybe of, of that movie yeah i like that a lot that's that's a really good idea and so I, another thought that crossed my mind uh, is, do you think harrison ford is at at all involved in the marketing of this movie that's a really good point too why not you know one last time harrison i mean i, I could see I mean, if they had negotiated this from the from the word go, that they knew they were going to do a Han Solo movie, so they got Harrison Ford's uh, okay and signature way back when. Because I, I don't know that you're going to do it. You, you'd get it now, unless, of course, I mean, he'll, if they pay him enough, he'll do it. But I could very easily see Alden Ehrenreich doing the talk show circuit with Han, with Harrison Ford, and you have you have both uh, both Han Solos doing the tour. I don't know if that does a disservice to Alden Ehrenreich, and it kind of takes away from him. Um, I I, but I think it'd be it would be cool to have Harrison Ford involved to some degree. No, I I 100% agree with you there. I I don't see Harrison and Alden doing the 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 circuit of shows together, but maybe like one on Kimmel or something like that. I could see it happening. You know. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, take it a step further. You have. Um, Donald Glover, Alden Ehrenreich, Billy D. Williams, and Harrison Ford, all doing you know very specific targeted stops. So Kimmel could be one. Um, who knows? I mean, I, I don't know what other 
big events they could do. But, you know, maybe they, they all show up to, I don't know, San Diego Comic Con together. Something like that. I, I wonder if it's, if, it, if it's something they would do. Yeah, I can't see it being in a commercial or something, but I would definitely like to see that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, for me, I just, I hope they kind of break the mold a little bit. I mean, there's such a machine over there. They, I, with the amount of money they're cranking out, almost at will, it's hard to see them stepping away from the quote-unquote template. Like, what they're doing now, it works, and it works really well. It's tough to justify uh, to your investors that you're going to do something different than what really works. I don't know. Like we, we both just kind of said that we think the movie's going to be different than any other Star Wars movie. Uh, I, I think they're going to be willing to take some chances. Nothing too risky either. You know what I mean? Like, but this probably, like we said, it's going to be a bit of a different kind of movie. So I agree. I just want to see something a bit different too. It's a really good question. Ads. Yeah, it's a great question. And again, I hope, that as this movie gets made, I hope that the people making it inter- interact with the fans via social media a whole lot. I really do. Uh, but Ads, thank you once again, sir. Brilliant question. I don't know where you come up with these week after week, but uh, come up with them, you do. And our show is better for it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, hats off. And we'll, we'll end the show with this one, Corey. It's uh, our old friend Rando, <clears throat> excuse me, Rando Calrissian chiming in. He's got a simple question for us this week, and he specified no loopholes. So get on the straight and narrow with this one, because uh, uh, secondarily and selfishly, we need to wrap it up. So <laughs> no tangents. <laughs> Greetings, says Rando. This week's musing is simply, which is more likely? Snoke is Plagueis or Ezra is Ray's father? Enjoy, and may the force be with you. Corey, what do you think? Well, first I want to say, what's going on, Rando? You mum. You my boy. Do um, you want to wrap it up quickly? I think this is a relatively simple one to answer, in my opinion. For me, uh, Disney or Lucasfilm, I think it was possibly even Paul uh, Pablo Hidalgo, stated clearly, like, Palpatine killed Plagueis. Like, Plagueis is no more. Plagueis is gone. It's just no more Plagueis. He's, he, he, <laughs> he was, he is canon. But he is dead also. I see it being much more plausible Ezra being Ray's father. Do I like it? I don't know. Do I see it being plausible? Yes. Does it make sense to me? Kind of yes. Like the the timelines work. Uh, yeah, the ages line up. The ages line up. We, we know that Rebels is about, supposed to be about Ezra's character. So it would be a great way to bridge the gap between animation and and the saga. I'm not going to go out there and say that it's Benicio Del Toro or, or whatever, but it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't upset me either. Like, if I'm not going to be a Ezra hater. was Ray's dad? It, yeah, 100% would totally not upset me. I, w- I would be stoked about it. I'm going to say it right now. Like, I'm not going to be a hater on... I, I love Rebels. Like, why not? We don't know where this show's going yet, so... There's a lot in between there, but if it is, if that's the case, I- I'm good with it. Especially, well, I would like to see how they end this series, but it it's possible. At least to me, it's a lot more possible than Snoke bl- being Plagueis. Put put percentages to them. <sighs> like Snoke, Snoke is Plagueis is compared to the yeah, like it's like a. 80. Just put a number to it. It's it's eighty percent unlikely, or whatever number you want to put to it. Snoke is Plagueis is like a ten percent less. Like it's ten. There's a ten percent possibility that Snoke is Plagueis. Yeah, less ten ten and less. <laughs> Under ten percent, and and Ezra is Ray's father. Go. Uh... Forty percent. Forty percent. Wow. Yeah, so that's pretty high. Um, that's pretty high. Wow. But it compared um, to what I just said, like I uh, will say, let's say thirty-five. Thirty-five. 
Yeah, that's still that's still a very decent chance. Um, well, well, we're going to agree in that there's no way there's no way Snoke is Plagueis to me. I'm going to peg that at. I'll, I'll leave the door open at like two percent. It's it's running on fumes. It's just about dead. There's there's to me no way that Snoke is Plagueis for the reason that you said, and also uh, I believe that I I don't believe that Lucasfilm is going to go against George Lucas's vision for things. I don't think they're going to undo some of the things that he did. They might elaborate and give it a new angle, but I don't think they're going to undo anything. So I, I believe that Lucas had envisioned Plagueis to be uh, of the of the moon or mun species. Snoke is not that. There's no way he's that. I know he's disfigured and whatnot, but there's no way he's of that species. So to me, that discounts Snoke as Plagueis almost entirely. Again, I, I always leave a small sliver just for the, you know, the, the puncher's chance type thing. And then... Well, that leaves Rey as Ezra's father uh, as being more likely. And, and Mark over at Talk Star Wars did uh, a pretty bang-up job of, of putting together the how and the why that it would be likely. I still consider it very unlikely. Uh, but I, I'll peg that at like 12%. Oh, wow. That's, that's quite low. Yeah, it makes sense though too. I know what you mean. So yeah, Ezra as Rey's father is far more likely. But I still think it's very unlikely. Yeah, I get that. But w- okay, let me ask you this though: Would it, if it were the case, and that that granted, again, we haven't seen how Rebels ends, but if that's the case, Episode Eight, Ezra is Ray's pappy. How how do you react to that? Do you like? Don't like? I think I'd probably react positively more than negatively pending uh seeing how it's how they actually do it like if, if benicio del toro ends up being ezra who ends up being Ray's dad they better ace the at the execution of that yeah i agree there i mean yeah that that, that makes be a really cool tie-in like to tie all that stuff together like i know a lot of people out there on the twitter machine are like vehemently against this, but I won't say I'm pro for it, but if it happens, I'm totally going to be on board. If if Ezra's raised dad? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you won't have a choice but to accept it. It's That, that, that will be the reality. Oh, you can have a choice. Um, you can say you don't, you don't like it. You, you, can, don't you can not like it, but you have to accept it. No, exactly. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, I guess it all depends on how they do it. And it, it, it would be nice in, to some degree to to have Rebels have a long-lasting legacy in, in having you know, Ezra and blank, maybe Sabine, uh, being the, the parents of Rey. I mean, that, that would legitimize the show completely. It's Ezra's story. That's what they've always said. I mean, there's got to be a point to it all. Can't just end like, that's it. It was fun. They did good. Yeah, I mean, there's got to be a larger point to their existence. They can't just set up the rebellion and then disappear. Right? 100%. Like, I really think that... I mean, especially with Ezra. Yeah, well, I, just the, at the animation in general, I think the further we move with these, because, you know, we, we know that we have another show in the works at this point. The further we move with these animations, I think the more and more it's going to try and weave a cohesive story of the saga. You know what I mean? Well, of course, yeah. I mean, they're, they're stringing everything together. Um, Yeah, but there you go. I think we both, I wonder how, what, what side James would have fell um, on this issue. But you and I both tend to agree, just on, on, on different ends of the spectrum. J- James was that you find it James far would more have hated it do. if Ezra was the father. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah uh, maybe, maybe we'll find out soon enough. 
Uh, but that's it. We're going to punch the clock. We're done for this week. Uh, thank you all so much for listening. Uh, Corey, where can we find you on Twitter? It's going to be at uh, Chop Rules with a Z. As usual. And uh, anything else you want to say before we, before we call it quits? I cannot wait to discuss with you gentlemen on Sith Disturbers. Uh, yeah, Sith Disturbers is always a good time. Can't wait to record that with you. And hopefully James who's, will hopefully have his tech issues. Or hopefully the weather will cooperate and, and allow his internet connection to hold steady. Uh, but again, thanks everybody for listening. Thank you, Ads. Thank you, Rando, uh, for your input this week. Appreciate it. And uh, again, don't forget to check out the Star Wars Commonwealth. Go to StarWarsCommonwealth.com. Check out our friends at Talk Star Wars, Generation X-Wing, Rogue Squadron, Skyhoppers, and the Nerd Room. And uh, again, head over to the Star Wars Star Wars Podcast Awards.com. It's the season. You got to help us out here. You got to pull the rope for the Star Wars Commonwealth. So head over there and uh, vote for us. As, vote for the Star Wars Commonwealth as best podcast podcast network. And Ash and, as uh, best female podcaster. Yes, absolutely. And um, other than that, if you're looking for other ways to help us out, uh, you can join us on Facebook, on Instagram. We, we always like to have a bit of fun there. And um, iTunes. Head over to iTunes and drop us a review. Uh, we're asking a whole lot of things, but uh, pick and choose wh- where, you, where you think you can best help us. And... Uh, we appreciate everything that you guys do for us. And uh, until Sith Disturbers, that's going to drop later this week. Uh, have yourselves a good one, and we'll talk to you again soon. Watching you walking away from me Were you watching me?